Welcome, welcome by For the Passion, Not the Fashion. We are here back with Rick Honholt. Hunholt, yeah. Hunholt, sorry, sorry. Am I, it's okay, am I copying? Chapter three about the Exodus past first. Yes, sir. Okay, Rick. How are you? Good morning. I'm great, man. How are you? Good morning. Or good afternoon for you. Yeah, for me, it's afternoon. I got my Chromex cap on, you know? I bought it at the I show. See. Hey, Harley shirt. looks great. I see right? that picture of you and Harley. He looks great. Yeah, he, he, he was an awesome guy. I, he, I, I, I came. It's not a guy like you, you know. You're like a very calm, sweet guy, but he's like very. When I saw him, I was like, "Whoa, what the fuck!" But he, in the end, he was really nice. He was very friendly. I, I was a really nice guy. Yeah. Oh, good. He's been around for a long time. He is. He is longer than anyone else. Anyone else? He, he was in yeah, the scene so. when he was nine or something. Wow. Stimulators. He drums in the strip. Stimulators with his with his aunt, punk band from wow. New York. That's crazy. He told me stories, Rick, that he was hanging out with Blondie and Ramones when he was only nine, ten year old. Wow. <laughs> we can't say that. <laughs> no. Okay, but we are here about your past, and you your past is also not uh, not that bad because you also had. Uh, a lot to say, I think. Yeah, 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 of course. Okay. Hey, Rick. Uh, yes, sir. First of all, I want to go back to our good friend, Paul. Yeah, your good friend, but my hero. Uh, yes, sir. What are your most precious memories about him? <clears throat> oh, wow. Marco, I have so many. Um, I think just... Uh, just just being with Paul was amazing, but he was so he was so into what we were doing um, every day. Uh, you know, even though he never made any money or he uh, <clears throat> he just loved being in Exodus, but and he just loved being around all the metalheads and being at the shows every day, every night, like on the weekends at Ruthie's and the stone. Yeah. And, uh, and the Omni and all the other, uh, the Mab and on Broadway. Uh, he, I think every day with Paul was an adventure. You know what I mean? We were, oh. we rode bikes a lot. Um, back in the day, uh, in, in downtown in like in the ghettos of Oakland and stuff like that. And it was super fun riding bikes with him. Uh, just, going to have coffee or going to get food. Um, it's a character, but everybody loved Paul. Either you loved him or you hated him. You know what I mean? He was, uh, there was no in between. Yeah. Uh, was, getting ready to go on stage with Paul was, was, a, was a really cool thing because <clears throat> he put on his leather pants and his leather vest and, and then he was, then he was ready to go. You know what I mean? It was all, all go after that. It's like yeah. he changed his whole persona once he got his leather pants on. <laughs> so if I'm right, uh, when you were with him, uh, one one on one, he was a uh, he could be a very calm and friendly guy, and then he come on stage, he was like a beast. Yeah, and he'd also be like a beast too. I mean, if you get some uh, you get some alcohol in him, um, yeah, and some uh, and some other substances that I'm not going to mention right now. Uh, yeah. He could turn into a beast, but he he was he was a crazy guy, especially if he didn't like you. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. when you have uh, puffed up hair and makeup as a guy. Right. <laughs> What's the? Uh, it's not the. It's it's the passion, not the fashion. Yeah. That's right. That's 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 good, what, that's, that's. He would have loved that. Yeah, because I think it's it's metal is is. Of course, it's first about the music, and some some bands or some fans forget don't forget this. Yes, absolutely, of course, we'll uh -huh. never forget. No, never. Hey, and uh, uh, about uh, because I don't know if you want to talk about it, but uh, uh, the we I think the fans like to know what happened and why, because he he recorded Bonded by Blood, which is the most. To be honest, I love all the records, but Bonded by Blood is something special. And uh, everybody, 
it's a classic and uh, every song on it is is equal all all songs are great and uh, but what was the reason he left can you tell me that why why paul left oh well okay so we we okay so i joined the band and we started doing local shows um yeah for about five months six months and then we went in to record the album marco yeah and uh we recorded the album everything was great yeah um uh we recorded the album started doing doing more shows and then we went to europe with mm -hmm. venom and slayer the very first time we ever went to europe just kids you know what i mean um yeah. shit, i'm i don't even know how old i was but i i know i wasn't old enough to buy alcohol i know that <laughs> in holland you could yeah in holland we could yeah for sure yeah. um oh i sure do love holland dude um holland was my favorite uh so thank you people there are just incredible um okay so you know and then we come back from we come back from europe yeah and uh, i'm trying to trying to remember all i know marco is all i can remember is that paul was living at our studio in uh in emeryville california yeah down in the ghetto and we were we were sharing our room with the ruffians a band called the ruffians the ruffians and, yes sir time uh got loose what's the name of the uh time got loose oh, i saw that and i i know that i have the album uh uh time cuts loose or something is uh one of the uh, it's an awesome yeah, band yeah yeah, Mark, Mark like is the CD. yeah. Wait, my friend is gonna take the cd ruffians anyway yeah oh, ruffians okay so um yeah. bad boys cut loose that was a song. bad boys cut loose right yes right carl albert yeah and my buddy craig bearhorst and luke bowman and chris atchison and dan mora all my guys we're good friends um but anyway paul was uh he, he wouldn't work <clears throat> he was getting bad on the drugs um yeah we all were but paul was paul was probably the worst um and we were at a point we were at a point in in the, uh in in the band We were just at a point. It was so tough. It was. It was the. It was the craziest thing. It was the hardest thing I ever did. Yeah. Um, the hardest thing we ever did. Um, and I don't even know today. At this point, uh, could have been the biggest mistake we ever made. Um, I don't know. No one will know. Yeah. Um, but I'll admit that it could have been the biggest mistake we ever made. Who knows? I mean, Zetro was great filling. You know what I mean? He was great. Yeah. He did a good job, but um, after we let Paul go, mm -hmm. he just fell deeper and deeper into his addiction and yeah. and everything. Uh, I don't know. So basically, he was just he was he was homeless, wouldn't get a job, and he wouldn't stop doing what he was doing. But we had to let him go, Marco. It was just to the point where it was getting so bad that he. <clears throat> yeah he couldn't he couldn't do anything you know he couldn't remember lyrics he was it was just bad you know but i'll be the first to admit that you know i always try to think of mm -hmm. what would have what would have happened to exodus if we kept paul yeah you know so i don't even know i don't even know if he would have been able to to sing any of the music off of pleasures of the flesh i don't know um anyway that was that was that was like the, the toughest decision me and gary ever had to make i can imagine it but, was horrible but Cetro, he made some really great records with uh with access too and yes, uh, and of course paul Badov is a cult guy and he he's a legend he's a myth but oh uh, he's he's a, he's a legend but i am also a fan a big fan of Cetro. And yeah. I also met him as a person. He was also very cool when I met him. And, I'm glad. Yeah, and uh, for me, uh, 
his voice was also quite equal to uh, to uh, to Bailoff. It sounds sim quite similar. Not not a copy, but it sounds. It's a re was a real voice of Exodus, and I think it's uh, was not bad when he was uh, that he was a good replacement for me. Yeah, he was absolutely. Um, you know, <laughs> not everybody's gonna like him. Uh, no, he's done a great job. I mean, you know, he's had his ups and downs. Um, mm -hmm. but I think he's on a. Uh, I think right now he's he's doing great. I think on Persona Non Grata he sounds better than he ever has. I. I'm a fan of every. Er, look at, look at Rusty. Oh, great. Oh, you have a dog. Oh, I love dogs. Hi, Rusty. But what's his name? Rusty. Rusty. Uh huh. What kind of uh, kind of dog is it? Do we... He's a little tiny. Uh, he's a little tiny minkin. Okay. How old is he? And now he's a star. Now he's a star. Rusty, get him. No. How old is he, Rick? Uh, I don't know, like four or five or something. I, I was uh, ah uh, great great great. He can sit before the window like a cat. Yeah, look at him. Uh, hi, Rusty. <laughs> hey, cool, cool. So, hey, Tim, what's the weather like in Holland? Uh, the weather is very good. It's uh, uh it's uh, not warm, but it's uh, such a temperature. You can wear everything, what you want, even the black t-shirt or whatever. You sometimes you have this weather, you cannot wear a black t-shirt or like a. Uh, like a sport jersey because it's too sweaty but this is the weather you can wear a jacket a t-shirt but it's not cold it's not warm it's perfect weather you know not for swimming yeah. but for going out it's perfect and there awesome yeah yeah yeah. so how uh it, yeah it's gonna be hot today hot. um how is uh the last show you went was uh was chromex chromex yeah how was that uh, it was short to be honest There's the also the support acts were short it was intense but the lack of uh audience there was not there was not so much people which was it's kind of sad of course because but How i think people, that, Marco? what wait a, uh what what how many wait a moment i uh uh shit. something went wrong how many people uh I think there was maybe 200, maybe, uh, because uh, uh, there's a lot of shows. Wait a minute, something is. Oh no, uh, there's a lot of shows coming at the moment, you know, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and everything, everything, at everything was postponed after the COVID, and now there's nearly everyday shows, and people have no money because of the crisis. It's a lot of financial problems. People have no money, but everyday shows. So the problem is that shows get get less attended, you know, than before. You know, that's oh wow. So um, so is gas expensive there? Yes, it was. Uh, it was uh, when I was in the Bay Area. My my dad said everything was so expensive ex except the, the gas for the car. But now it changed. Also, I heard because of the. Now everything, now everything is expensive in the bay, right? Yeah, it's crazy, but seven dollars a gallon for gas. I have no cl no clue how much it is here because I cannot drive a car, but I know uh, it was cheap in U.S. Uh, in November, but everything changed uh, with Russia and stuff and the Ukraine and stuff. Everything changed. Also for you guys, it changed a lot. I think. Yeah, it's bad. So you're you're a, this is your home that you're at. You live by yourself, Marcus. Yeah, yeah, Marcus? yeah, yeah. I live here by myself. Uh, in uh, the eighteenth of August, uh, Tim and uh, the Dead Angel guys will will visit me and Greg. I don't know. It would be it would be so great if you could join them to Dynamo and then you could co come over here too. I was supposed to play the international thing with Craig. Uh, he asked me to go, but I just couldn't do it, man. I just uh. I just couldn't do it, Marcus. Okay, otherwise you could would be welcome. But you for sure you come someday you come back to Europe, right? I hope. Of course. Of course. Hopefully yeah. with my kids. Oh, okay. Is he uh doing can we stay at your he... house, Marco? Of course you can stay at my house. For sure. That would be awesome. Felix Felix asked me uh asked me to stay in my house uh two years ago. Felix Griffin, it was a great, great friend of mine. It's it's my it's it's such a I love Felix. It's my it's my brother, you know, my Felix Griffin. Yeah, yeah. And, What's he doing? 
he is uh, uh, active with uh, some band, like Bad, you know, Bad with, uh, with uh, oh no, he's out of Bad now. What's he doing now? Uh, uh, he's not doing not much, not much at the moment, I think. But he uh, he did a lot of things. Eh? No, it's not an, in Bad anymore. Uh, but he's also uh, the uh, Blonde, Blonde Frost Drama. I don't know if they are still around. Blonde Frost Drama. I don't know what Felix is doing at the moment, but he moved uh, back to... He was living in the Bay for a time, then he lived in LA, now he lives in, in Texas again. He's moving all the time. I don't know. Yeah. But he, he was planning to come over to Europe, and then he asked me to uh, if he could stay at my place. I said, of course, Felix, if you are coming over, you can stay here. Yeah. He's, you know him eh, from the past, eh, Felix Griffin. Of course. Of course. He lived also in the Bay, right? Uh, I'm not. I know. I know. Uh, I'm not sure where he lived in the Bay Area, but I know that he uh, he lived in Houston, and we used to when we were. Yeah, going he, through that's Texas, where he's from. There's where he's, there we're, there's where where he's from. From Houston. Yeah, yeah. We would we would hang out for sure uh, every time. Cool. Yeah, I remember when he was in DRA. Great drummer, eh? Yeah, good drummer. And very young at the time, eh? Yeah, he was just a kid. <laughs> he was really a kid, yeah. But he's great. Hey. Uh, yeah. Uh, Rick, about yes, uh, about something uh, I would like to know. Uh, who came actually first with the aggressive Bay Area thrash metal sound? Was it Metallica? Was it Axis? Or was it someone else? Who who started the sound of the Bay, the real Bay Area thrash sound? Well, okay, let's get this clear. Um, for one, Metallica is not from the Bay Area. No. Uh, yeah, from, they moved on. Uh, they moved there. They're from Orange County. Uh, so that's that's funny. So I think that um, in the Bay Area, I'm I'm gonna have to say it was Exodus. Okay. I'm I'm, I'm definitely gonna have to say it was Exodus. Um, there was other bands doing. Doing it at the same time, but they were kind of following our lead. You yeah. know, what I mean? this is before I joined the band. So, yeah. um, but so, but it wasn't really the band members, dude, that, that really got the sound started. And of course, Exodus was playing the music. Yes. But it was Ron Quintana and Sam Cress and uh, and uh, and Brian Liu who really, who really got it out of the bay area you know what i mean yeah because they traded all the tapes they got us they got us out there uh and when metallica is it and we we had always heard of metallica we had heard metallica's first demo tapes coming up the coast yeah. um i think we probably got them from ron or brian uh and then we were like dude these guys are doing the same shit we are wow this is crazy um Mm -hmm. but in the in the in the thick of it in like when when you're in it uh when you're, you're not really aware of the fact that you're starting a new genre of of, of heavy metal you're mm -hmm. not really aware of the fact that that no one in the whole world is doing music like this you're just doing it you know what i mean yeah um, because there is no internet and there is no uh social media so you're not really and the only reason the only the way that we heard bands like Venom and uh, and the heavier bands was from tape trading. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, until Black Metal came out. I'm not sure what year it came out. Uh, 82. 82? I think so, yeah. So that was, dude, that was the first. I mean, literally, you know, Black Metal came out and we're just going, wow, this is heavy, dude. Because we would listen, we were listening to, to Priest and Maiden and Jag Panzer and Budgie and UFO and Shanker and Gary Moore and Thin Lizzy. Uh, Merciful Fate was the biggest one. I think me and Gary was our favorite. And Sabotage. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, all these great bands, you know, but this is, I, I'd have to say that um, Exodus is probably the ones that, 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 that created the sound in the Bay Area at first. Okay. 
And uh, about the uh, Ron Katina, Ron, Ron, Ron. He, he wrote, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's very difficult to, to say for me. The, uh, he, he wrote me and uh, when I was in the Bay, uh, that he was, he was, he's still running that record store, he told me. Yeah, in and, Grass Valley. Yes, but it was too far for us to, to put it in the, in the schedule. So I didn't mm -hmm. visit him, but I really, so, but I, I asked him for an interview. I really want to do him an interview. If you ever, ever meet him, ask him to do, to do an int. I would love to do an interview with Ron because I know he's a, he's not a musician, but he has a lot to say about the Bay Area. He's well, he knows quite... more than anybody. He knows more know. than anybody. So you can probably reach out to him on Messenger, Marco. I did, I did, but he's, uh, he's not very uh, easy uh, to get. To, to uh, how you say that? What time we gotta go? Hey Marco, I gotta I gotta get my kid to work. Uh, okay, okay. We Shall we do it five minutes and then stop? Yeah, five minutes. We'll okay. Five minutes. All right, five minutes. Okay, but please, uh, if you talk to uh, Ron, tell me, tell him uh, to. I would love to do an interview with this guy because I of know he's a legend, and many people in Europe like to hear his stories because he's uh, he has so much to say about the Bay Area scene. No, I know it is. Okay, okay. Uh, last, uh, last thing. Uh, maybe you can make it short. Uh, was there a, a rivalry in the scene back in those days, or was it one big family, the Bay Area trash scene? Okay, so um, that's a good question. Um, I'll, I'll give you my perspective. Yeah. From 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 where where I stood in the whole scene. Uh, number one, I'm I'm a really really competitive person yeah um i was the only person in in the band that was from the actual city of berkeley i was born and raised in berkeley yeah berkeley is the home of keystone berkeley and ruthie's yeah okay so that was kind of my crowd um and uh stb is slate team berkeley mm -hmm. uh so we were really competitive. Okay. Yeah. So when, when, uh, so when we got rid of Paul yeah. and hired Zetro, yeah, that kind of brought the Dublin crew in because he was in Legacy, which used to be, which was now Testament. Okay. Yeah. Right. Legacy, the Legacy, the band before, we, before we he joined Texas. Legacy that turned into Testament. Yes. Right. So in the beginning, I think there was, I think there was a lot of competition between us and Testament. Um, not so much with the violence guys, because we were really, we were good friends with violence, yeah. but Testament back, back in the day, there wasn't bad blood, but we were very competitive. Um, but I, I'd say that was probably the only rivalry. You know, I mean, we were really close with Forbidden. Uh, like I said, the violence guys, um, attitude, attitude adjustment. All, you I love them. Um, hardcore band crossover. Oh, yeah, yeah, th yeah, absolutely. Uh, they were a big part of the scene too. This Sacrilege BC. Uh, I have the records too. I mean, it, the list goes on and on and on. Um, that Angel. Yeah, Death Angel, uh, Anvil Chorus. Yeah. Um, Mordred came along later. Blind Delusion? Um, Blind Delusion was probably the oldest band besides us. Yeah, for sure. But they weren't doing thrash. They were doing like more prog, prog thrash kind of, you know, they had their own sound, right? Yeah. I just went and saw Blind Delusion a couple of days ago. They're great. You have a list yeah, of great bands there, and Mordred. Uh, I loved, I loved the demos, but and they had Fool's Game. They, they, they made their last real trash album, and then they get more funky, which yeah. not really my taste. But uh, especially the first demos and the first record are awesome. Yeah, they're really good, really, really, really good. Hey, look, but uh, can we, can we, can we finish this? Yes, of uh, course, man. Okay. So we'll do this again. Um, number four. Yeah, like in a week or so. Okay. Uh, yes, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Rick. 
It's Thank always a pleasure to what to talk to you. And next time you join us, to join the folks to uh, to the Netherlands, man. Hell yeah! Uh, okay. Hell yeah! I love you, hey, Marco. I love you too, man. And uh, for the passion, not the fashion, Rick Honholt. Thank you very awesome. much, brother. I'll see you later. Have a good see day. See you later, bro. bro. You too. Bye. Bye bye.